FNF has introduced me to the surprisingly dark and grimy world of My Little Pony. And yes, I am talking about the children's cartoon based on the Hasbro My Little Pony franchise. I have gone down a crazy rabbit hole of creepypastas, animation, FNF mods, and even legit video games. And I was honestly surprised to find that some of the My Little Pony media is even darker than like Happy Tree Friends, a show that literally ruined the innocence of millions of children. And just a fair warning, some of the content in this video may be on the darker side, so no worries if you need to drop out of the video at any point. And with that being said, let's go ahead and start with the creepypasta that started it all that goes by the name of Cupcakes. For those of you who are not deep into the My Little Pony fanfic community, you probably didn't hear about this creepypasta until it actually got turned into an animation by Mr. Davey back in 2012. Or for people in my community, you probably didn't hear about it until it became an FNF mod. Now this story only actually contains two ponies, that being Rainbow Dash and Pinkie Pie, or more specifically Pink Amina. Pink Amina is a murderous psychopath that will hunt down, hurt, and kill any pony with no remorse. And she's basically meant to be like a over the top mirror of the original Pinkie Pie who is very cute and wholesome and just fun loving. I think she originated from the My Little Pony episode called Party of One. Pinkie Pie thinks that all her friends have forgotten her birthday so she sets up her own little party with a bunch of stuffed animals and slowly starts to lose her mind. In the end we saw that her friends were just setting up a little surprise party for her but the fandom took this as one of the more creepier episodes in the My Little Pony series and made this whole dark alter ego for Pinkie Pie. Now in the actual cupcake creepypasta, Pinkie decides to ask Rainbow to come over to her house one day to help her bake cupcakes. Now Rainbow Dash having no real reason to reject this offer of course rushes over to help her friend. But when she arrives she realizes that she's actually supposed to be part of this cupcake recipe but she realizes too late and Pinkie actually puts Rainbow to sleep. Rainbow does manage to wake up but she's strapped to this metal slab and notices that the room is filled with corpses of ponies that Pinkie has already killed and she's wearing their wings and their cutie marks. And to make matters even worse, this is where Pinkie just straight up tell Rainbow that she's going to use her as the special ingredient in her cupcakes. In the next scene, we basically see Rainbow Dash get her wings and her cutie mark cut off. And then she is basically butchered by Pinkie Pie altogether. One of the darkest parts about this story is that while all this dismemberment is happening, Pinkie Pie is just making a bunch of jokes and seems to be really happy about what she's seeing. Some of the quotes that really stood out to me is when Pinkie says that she's so happy that her friend actually came to help her make cupcakes, which I am positive that as Rainbow knew she was going to be a part of the recipe, she would have never shown up. And the second thing that really caught my attention is when Pinkie says that she thought Rainbow would have been tougher, as if somebody can actually be tough while they're being chopped into pieces. Now back when this creepypasta was first written, it was deemed one of the worst creepypastas ever, but over the years it has definitely gained like a cult-like following and it has spawned a lot of other stories that are just as crazy. Now since we're speaking of Cupcake spinoffs, this next one is going to be for those people that didn't like the way that Cupcake ended, especially the fact that Rainbow kept getting kind of shafted. There's a spinoff called Rocket of Insanity and it's from the perspective of Rainbow Dash. Rainbow basically has a nightmare about Pinkie Pie chopping her up, which keeps her up at night because whenever she dozes off, she has that same dark dream. She doesn't share this information with any of the other ponies because she thinks that they'll believe that she's overreacting or going crazy. After days of not being able to get proper sleep, she starts to get really grumpy and a little bit insane until finally Pinkie Pie invites her to her house. When Rainbow arrives, Pinkie pulls out some cupcakes that look just like the ones from Rainbow's Nightmare, aka the original cupcake story. Not wanting to go through that torture again, Rainbow grabs a knife and tells Pinkie to get away. But Pinkie Pie, being so naive and good natured, doesn't realize the danger that she's in and she approaches Rainbow Dash anyway and ends up being stabbed in return. And of course it's revealed that she never actually had any intentions to kill Rainbow Dash. The next story that I want to mention is called The Experiment of Twilight Sparkle, which is another story that's very similar to Cupcakes. You can tell that it was definitely inspired by it, but instead of Pinkie Pie just dissecting Rainbow Dash, it's Twilight dissecting the five main ponies. Those of course been Rainbow Dash, Pinkie Pie, Rarity, Applejack, and Fluttershy. Twilight threw a party for all the ponies and once it was over, she convinced them to come back to her lab so that she could run some experiments on them. Basically wanting to study the magic of friendship but instead just turned into Twilight cutting up each of the ponies one by one while the other ponies had to watch. The weirdest part about this one is that Twilight never actually cared about the research or finding any type of answers. She simply wanted to torture her friends and then make their corpses do crazy things like smile. Next we're going to look at an animation called Shad.mov and while this one may have also been a creepypasta originally, it was definitely most well known by being a dark animation created by Hot Diggity Dog back in 2012. And some of my younger audience members may know this one because it also got 
turned into an F and F mod not too long ago. This animation revolves around Fluttershy, and I know this is gonna sound kind of weird to say, but her animation was kind of sad because she was bullied very badly by the other ponies. They would constantly beat her up, and there was even a scene where they poured blood all over her, just like the scene from Carrie. But the one thing that was consistent is that even after all that abuse, she would always tell them to stay out of her shed. Now, of course, Rainbow Dash, Spike, and Pinkie Pie seem to have forgotten this fact and went into her shed anyway. Now, when they actually walked into her shed, they were greeted with a bunch of dead bodies, brains, and blood everywhere. And it became obvious that the shed was being used as Fluttershy's personal murder shack. We even see a less known pony named Derpy, aka Muffins, who literally got her skin pulled over a toaster. So she's literally just a toaster face for whatever reason. Now, as the ponies and Spike are exploring the shed, Fluttershy shows up behind them looking completely insane. And while Pinkie Pie and Spike are able to escape, Rainbow Dash is captured. Fluttershy straps her to a chair and takes a chainsaw to her head, literally cutting her in half. The cops do end up showing up, but unfortunately they are too late to actually save Rainbow Dash, but they do end up taking Fluttershy to an insane asylum. Next, we have a creepypasta called The Cough, and this creepypasta is gonna hit close to home for a lot of people, especially after the last three years of living in a panini. In this story, Equestria has fallen victim to a deadly virus, and many ponies have already died due to it. The six main ponies have managed to survive up to this point, and are all hiding out in this dark room. And when I say dark, I mean it's so dark that they can't even see each other. Then in the darkness, one of the pony lets out a cough, which is the only warning that the ponies get to know that somebody's sick. The ponies decide that they have to kill the pony that is sick or else they'll all get infected. None of the ponies seem to want to step up at first, but then Fluttershy steps up and claims that she is the one who coughed. And after some discussion, it is decided that Rainbow Dash, since she's the only one with real combat experience, should be the one to take her out. What I thought was really sad here is that Fluttershy doesn't even try to resist when she figures out her fate but instead just faces away from the ponies and allow Rainbow to basically kick her in the head. What makes this even worse is that Rainbow Dash can't finish the job in one kick and has to kick her over and over again basically making Fluttershy suffer. Once the deed is done the ponies think they are safe but then they hear <coughs> Next I want to talk about two creepypasta stories that were introduced into FNF and that's how I actually found them. This mod is based off a piece of fanfic called an apple sleep experiment created by magpie pony and the fanfic was actually inspired by the creepypasta called the russian sleep experiment now for those of you that don't know the creepypasta deals with russian researchers back in like the late 1940s who kept five people awake for 15 days using a type of gas and as you would suspect the five prisoners ended up going completely crazy due to lack of sleep but there is one quote that really stands out at the end of the creepypasta that relates to this mod. The quote is this, We are you. We are the madness that lurks within you all, begging to be free at every moment in your deepest animal mind. We are what you hide from in your beds every night. We are what you sedate into silence and paralysis when you go to the nocturnal haven where we cannot tread. And what this means is, as people stay awake for too long, we fall victim to madness. And this is what we actually get to see with Applejack. Now, obviously the fanfic revolves mostly around Applejack, but it actually all begins with a pony called Filthy Rich. And basically this pony insists that the Apple family owes him more Zap Apple Jam, which is basically what they make on this farm of theirs. Now, Applejack's grandma ended up taking a loan from this pony. And as a result, now he's saying since they can't pay it back, he wants all their jam. So yes, he is a bit of a scumbag. And to make matters even worse, during this time in Equestria, there's a huge drought, meaning that it is severely hot, which makes it even worse for these ponies because now they have to work out in this blazing heat. And even knowing this, Filthy Rich still only gives them two weeks to basically reach this deadline. And while Applejack is not happy about this and she argues with him, she eventually realizes that she's not gonna get anywhere arguing with Filthy Rich. So she begins to overwork herself to meet this deadline. But of course she realizes that she's not able to work fast enough in order to reach this deadline. And if that wasn't bad enough, eventually Big Mac ends up getting heat stroke, so they're not able to help at all either. So in order to save her farm, Applejack goes to Twilight and asks her to mix up a potion that will basically keep her awake for a full day. Now in Twilight's defense, she does warn Applejack that this could end very badly for her, 
but Applejack is so desperate to save her farm that Twilight eventually gives in to her request. And good news, the potion does actually work. The problem is that the potion actually works too well. The potion was supposed to wear off after 24 hours, but instead lasts for days. And during this time, Applejack finds herself unable to sleep at all. Now, some of you may not think that that's a big deal, but it has been proven that after 48 hours of no sleep, people will start to see things that are not there. So basically a person sees hallucinations, which occurs when you see something that isn't actually there at all. And they can also suffer from illusions, which are when you see something, but you think it's something else, right? So a person may see like an animal running through the woods and think that there's some shadowy monster actually stalking them, right? Because they're so deprived of sleep. So as you can imagine, as time goes on, this quickly starts to take a toll on Applejack's mind. She keeps thinking that she's seeing filthy rich or ponies that work for him. And she starts to kill all the ponies that come onto her family's orchard to try to help her. And this is actually why we see her with the shovel in this mod. It was basically like her main weapon of choice to take out these ponies along with knives. And of course her other weapon was her hooves, meaning that she would simply buck them to death. And for people that don't know, a horse's kick can transfer a force of more than 2,200 pounds. And to put that into context, it only takes 900 pounds of force to break bone. So all that to say, a horse's kick can hurt like heck and even be deadly. And while we don't know every pony that ended up being killed by Applejack, we do know that it was a lot because in the story, it actually describes the orchard as like a death field, meaning that it was just filled with ponies. But some of the ponies that were named were like Bon Bon, the green pony whose name is Lyra, I believe. And probably the saddest person on the list is Apple Bloom, who is Applejack's little sister, and also the person who was able to give Applejack the cure. But once she actually puts the needle with the cure inside of her sister, Applejack ended up bucking her hind legs and kicking her little sister into a tree. And while this doesn't necessarily mean that she is dead, by the way that the story ends, it implies that her little sister is no longer with us. And while we don't get to see this in the mod, we do get to see in the actual fanfic that Applejack is kind of captured and put into a cell once she's given the cure. And it seems that the person who locks her away is Twilight. And of course, the reason that she gives is because Applejack actually murdered a bunch of people, but they're not going to execute her because she's also been a hero in their land for a long time as well. So basically, they're going to allow her to live out the rest of her days as a prisoner in a cell, which some would argue is even worse than death. And one of the things here that rubbed me the wrong way and a lot of other fans of My Little Pony is that in this story, Twilight is the one that gave her this potion, but she doesn't take any responsibility for the effect that it had on her. So basically, Twilight makes up a story saying that Applejack just lost her mind because she wasn't sleeping, but she leaves out the part where she gave her the potion that allows her not to sleep. And the reason behind this is because she's royalty and she doesn't want to give herself a bad name. It was actually a pretty sad ending and it left a bitter taste in a lot of people's mouth. Now in the free play songs, we see a song that's titled Pegasus Device. And this is actually from a creepypasta called Rainbow Factory. And it was created by a person named Aurora Don. This creepypasta tells the story of two Pegasus called Scootaloo and Orion who fail a flight test because they try to help another pony named Aurora after she ends up breaking her wing while flying. Now you would think that the other ponies would be happy that their young students cared about others, but instead the instructors were actually very upset and called these ponies worthless for failing their flight test. The three of them were then transferred to a large weather factory that is managed by Rainbow Dash. And back in the day, maybe some people were surprised to see that Rainbow Dash as a villain, but a lot of creepypastas have her as a villain or she's either chained up and going through something horrific. So I wasn't surprised to see her at all. Now, after these ponies have been locked in a large room with several other ponies, Rainbow Dash actually reveals that this is not just a weather factory, but a rainbow creating factory. And even though rainbows are super beautiful, the way that they are made in this universe is super super savage this factory basically creates rainbows by grinding little ponies up that failed their flight test and the machine is called a pegasus device which explains the name of the song in fnf mod this machine basically converts the corpses of little ponies into individual colors which are then mixed to make a rainbow and sadly none of the ponies in this story actually survive at the end they're either beaten up by guards or turned into a rainbow this is actually a really dark creepypasta, especially considering that most of the people being killed here are very young. Something Sweet to Bite is next on our list, and this one started out kind of tame, but ended up being just as crazy as the others. This story deals with a tradition where all the ponies leave an offering of candy to Princess Luna during a holiday called Nightmare Night, which seems to be a lot like our version of Halloween. The offering is supposed to be thanks for Princess Luna stopping the candy mare once upon a time. And the candy mare is interesting because she started out as a pony that was kidnapped from her parents by a mad scientist that was still children and feed them only candy until they died. 
This particular little pony was different though because she did not die like the rest. One day she asked for something other than candy and the mad scientist gave her some meat that turned out to be the flesh of her own father. After that, the little pony broke free of her cage, killed the mad scientist and became the candy mare. The creepiest part about this story is that near the end, the candy mare actually appears in town and starts killing ponies indiscriminately. So of course, Twilight and a few of the other ponies use their magic to rip the candy mare into pieces. But they soon notice that the battle isn't over because the pieces of the candy mare start to move and it seems like they're trying to combine together again. The ponies decide that the best course of action is to actually eat all the pieces of the candy mare so that she can't reconnect. But later that night as the ponies are laying down to go to sleep, they suddenly start to explode basically and a candy zombie version of themselves is left behind. It sounded very reminiscent to like the movie Alien where the aliens would basically lay their eggs in humans and then they would later on burst out of the body. These next two stories I made sure to save to the end because they're not simply gory but they also deal with self-arm, SA, and also pedo stuff so click off now if any of that is going to be a trigger warning for you now little miss rarity is going to be the first of the two on this list and this one is interesting because it deals with masochism sadism and then descends into just pure madness and just to define these words real quick a masochist is somebody that takes pleasure in hurting themselves a sadist is somebody that takes pleasure in hurting others the idea that in real life this is actually done with consent and the reason that people hate this creepypasta so much is because it doesn't do that it's just straight up crazy and harmful and gory now the story goes that rarity ends up being scratched by her cat Opal and it turns out that she actually really loved the pain. Rarity ends up killing the cat later and then she ends up putting the cat's heart into a doll making it a living doll called Pink Amina. Part of the reason for that is because Pinkie Pie had already turned into a killing machine that loves to inflict pain on other ponies so Rarity thought that now since she is a pony that loves to have pain inflicted on her this will be a fitting name for her little doll. The situation gets even worse when Rarity starts to inflict damage on her little sister as well and one of the things that people find most disgusting about this is that it's unclear if the little sister actually likes having pain done to her or if she just likes the idea of being closer to her sister. And a lot of people have mentioned that it's one thing to have a creepypasta just be gory for no reason but when you start adding children into it it gets to another level of creepy which is again why a lot of people didn't really like this creepypasta. Now before I get to this last one I want to give two honorable mentions out. The first one is going to be a puppet to her fame. I thought that that story was okay but I didn't want to add another story in with children being hurt. And then the last one is going to be Haunting Nightmare. I thought this one's actually fairly interesting and it had an animation that went along with it but i'll leave links in the description to both of these if you want to go check them out for yourself or i may make a part two to this video if you guys want to hear more of these creepypasta stories because there are a bunch now with that being said last on our list is called sweet apple massacre and this story is so high on the list for me because it involves three of the youngest ponies in the my little pony series i'm talking about apple bloom squeedy bell and scootaloo aka the cutie mark crusaders and to be clear these young ponies are between the ages of six and twelve and in this particular story i'm pretty sure that they are on the younger side of that range which makes this even worse now i can't get into too much detail but basically big mac has trapped the crusaders in a hidden room in a cellar and when he goes down there he starts to torture them and violate their body what makes matters even worse is that he doesn't even hesitate in harming his own sister for those of you that don't know big mac or aka big macintosh applejack and apple bloom are all siblings and this is another reason why the story makes it so high on this list for me it contains elements of pedo activities obviously but also sororicide which basically means the act of killing one's own siblings specifically your sister this one was truly just senseless violence all just for shock value and the thing that really scares me about this one is that a lot of people in the fandom say that this isn't even the worst story and i guess you can argue that that's just based on people's opinion but it really scares me that there may be things in this fandom that is even darker than this particular story and in all honesty i'm not sure if i want to go any deeper down this rabbit hole but with that being said let me know what's the craziest my little pony fanfic you have read or seen and check out this video on the screen here subscribe today to become a member of the orse force and we'll see you in another video. Peace, peace.